We told you earlier this year Japan is one of the most important countries to Nebraska agriculture. It's this state's top international buyer of beef and pork. As a whole, Japan imports 60% of its food and the United States is its largest supplier of agricultural goods. Future trade between the two countries could be impacted by the Trans-Pacific Partnership, or TPP, a 12-nation trade agreement that continues to be worked out. Earlier this week, we talked with Nebraska Department of Ag Director Greg Iba about his recent trip to Japan, which preceded a trade mission to Asia from Nebraska Governor Pete Ricketts. Well, Japan, uh, we went on a trade mission with the Lieutenant Governor and uh, it was uh, to promote Nebraska agricultural products and specifically red meat, pork and beef. And we worked with USMEF and we had representatives from a number of Nebraska commodity groups present that actually contributed money to do some of the promotional events and work with stores and, and uh, promote beef and pork in that marketplace. Why is it important to go over there and meet with these people face to face? What kind of benefit does that bring back for the state? Well, first of all, Japan's our most important market. 50% uh, you know, of the pork and 20% of the beef that goes on Nebraska ends up in Japan. So, you know, they're good customers. We need to go over there and say thank you and ask them to continue their business because Australia is there and Europe is there trying to sell beef and pork respectively. And so we got to be there to say hello, we want your business. And then we also, you know, anytime you know, we're a foreign product going into their marketplace. So the promotional activities we do, the stories we tell, help make our foreign product familiar to them and increase their comfortability with purchasing from us. Is that a market that could increase for the U.S. consumer or for, the U for Nebraska products, I guess I should say, or is that a market that's stagnant? You know, lots of people refer to J Japan as being a mature market, and you know, I think we learned that it's anything but a mature market. I think there is a lot of optimism on the business side of Japan, the importers, that with TPP looking like it will probably, you know, we'll have some resolution yet this year, I hope, that uh, the lowering of the tariffs on U.S. beef and pork make us super competitive with Australian beef and European pork because they already have agreements in place and so they're really thinking that because of our quality we will be able to step in there and, and start taking away market share. So from Japan you flew to Hawaii for the National Association of State Departments of Agriculture of which you are now the president. Congratulations. Yeah, thank you. Quite a presence to be in here today. Yeah, well, I don't know about that. It <laughs> Tell doesn't me, feel any different than being vice president. You're just a normal guy, aren't <laughs> yeah. you? Tell me about the purpose of those meetings. So uh, that's a national association, similar to like when uh, Governor Heinemann was president of the National Governors mm -hmm. Association. So we get together with the 50 other states and three provinces to discuss ag issues and try to work together to share experiences like on avian influenza for states that are worried about it. If it shows up in their state, you know, what lessons did we learn that they can apply? We share that kind of information. And then we also work on policy issues. And so we pass resolutions to bring to Congress's attention of things that, you know, we try to stay, since agriculture is highly variable across the 50 states, we try to stay out of those real controversial that might pit one state or region against another state or region. But, you know, those overarching ones we think we can make a difference on. And then we also work uh, very closely with FDA, USDA, and EPA, they all regulate agriculture in some way, shape, or form. And so as they're developing regulations or implementing statutes that Congress passed, we work with them to try to make sure that they're as workable as they can be for agriculture. Not to be too specific, but with avian influenza, what's the general feeling you get from other states about the coming fall and winter? Uh, USDA has worked really hard. Uh, to prepare states and make sure states have plans and have thought about how they're going to react to it. So I think in general states are very prepared and so we're probably, if anything, I hope we're over worried about it. But you know, uh, there, there's a, a fairly significant concern at USDA that the migration back to the south this fall will, will bring another wave of bird flu, especially in the the mid-Atlantic states where they avoided it last time around and there's large populations of birds. You know, I, I think we're well positioned in Nebraska with a smaller poultry population to be able to manage the threat, but 
it all depends on how virulent the strain is at this point in time and whether or not it uh, actually gets into our flocks again. Through our previous reporting from Japan, you can learn more about Japan's imports of U.S. ag products. You can also find out more about how the Trans-Pacific Partnership could impact trade between the two countries. You can find those videos under the Japan playlist of our YouTube channel.